Starfish Revolution is embroidery layout software that lets you design and visualize complex circular layouts and print templates or instructions for embroidering them. And while it's the perfect complement to the Sewing Revolution line of rulers, you can also create full-size printable templates that don't even require these rulers. Hi, Lindy Goodall here for Lindy G Embroidery. In this video, I'll show you some of the design features of this simple, easy-to-use software. For more information and inspiration, visit www.starfishrevolution.com.au. So as an embroidery designer and digitizer, I'm always looking for new ways to get creative with my designs. The main advantage of Starfish Revolution is the ability to create complex layouts that exceed your embroidery machine sewing fields and then print a layout to map out all the placement of those designs. So why not do that in your regular embroidery software? Well, some programs won't let you create a design bigger than the allowable sewing field. And I don't know of any programs that will create a placement guide for each design element on the screen. The important thing to know is that Starfish Revolution only creates layouts and templates. It doesn't modify or create embroidery designs. You can't even color or resize a design. It simply works with the image that it extracts from the embroidery design. So let's look at a sample project. Here you can see a sample project. This is one of the ones that comes with the embroidery software. And these dotted lines represent a 14 inch area. So I don't know about you, but I don't have a sewing field that big on any of my machines. So in this area, you can see the four designs that were used in the design on the, the work area. Now, I can't actually click on anything in here. In fact, you see that I have a magnifying glass, so all this does is zoom in and out. So I can't move individual elements. Everything is controlled via this control panel over here. So if I click on the butterfly, I can see that it's used six times in my design. If I click on uh, the leaves, you'll see I've used it ten times in the design. And what we do is we can take that element and move it in and out. This is the spread of the design. We can rotate it. Of course now it's behind the little flowers. And you can play around in here as much as you like. You can bring in up to six designs. So I have four in this one. Now let's look at the toolbar up here. You'll see the pretty standard tools, new, open, save, undo, redo. These you'll see in just about any program. Notice there are no menus. Everything that you need to operate this program is right here on this screen. So it's, it's very simple. So let's look at some of these other tools. So if we go to layout setup, you can see that um, this one's set to a 14 inch block. If, if I got crazy and made something really huge, I could change the size here. I can choose to create ruler instructions or paper templates. Paper templates would be what we'd most likely use if we don't have the Sewing Revolution rulers. But you can come back and change these options. Notes, you can store any information you'd like to, to know about the, the designs. You know, it's, a lot of times we create something and we don't know why we did something the way we did or what we intended it for. This is a good place to put those notes. Here's the template. And this is what you would be printing. So you can see that we have crosshairs for each one of these designs. And notice that we have this little kind of V shape that points to the top of the design and you can see how it rotates around. We have a lot of designs on this. We can change the background. We can choose to show a fabric background where we get a little bit of texture. We can have a smooth background and you can pick a different fabric color. But I'm going to keep that one. You can do a print preview. And what this does is the first page is sort of an overview of our project. You see a scaled down version of the entire design, what designs we used in there. And so you can see that it tells you the size of the designs, the name of the design, any kind of information about the design, and the notes. Now this one has nine pages. So let's see what some of those other pages are. So we have, these are the ruler guides, and these are our placements. So this one is set up for working with the rulers. That kind of gives you an overview, but let's make something. That's what we're here for. So let's create a new document. So we were going to create one with paper templates. 
I'll leave this at the default and then I'll import an embroidery design. Now notice that you can only select these four formats. It doesn't matter what your machine reads or sews because remember we're not creating an embroidery file. We're only creating a template. So you'll need to have one of these formats and if you don't have that format you'll need to use some kind of software to convert to this format. So I'll open a design. I'll check one from the DST folder because these are single color designs so it doesn't make any difference. There's my design. Press finish and here we are. So let me switch this back to normal view. And they're kind of piled up there in the center and I can spread them out by doing that. So let's make a duplicate and they're once again stacked on top so I'll mirror this one and I'll flip it and then I'll rotate it so that kind of spins them around and they're just about where I want them. I'm going to spread them out just a tad more select this other one spread it out just a bit more and there I have sort of a nice orientation and I could play with this a little bit more but for purposes of our demonstration here I'll just move on. Let's import another design. So I'll import this little flower design and it's brought in three of those. I want six. So we can just click this up to six and spread those out and also rotate those. Spread them out just a touch more I think. That looks pretty good. So I need to put something in the middle here. Let's try another one of these flowers. So I'll duplicate that and put this down to one. You can see that we have one right there in the middle. Now I don't really like the composition here because there's just too much space around this. This flower really needs to be bigger. I can't resize it in here but I can resize it in Imbrilliance. So let's switch over to Imbrilliance and we'll open up that design and I'll open the, the PES version and we'll select it. I'm going to make it 200 percent here. And then we have it twice the size of its original and I'll save that. And I'm going to save it as a DST and we'll just save over this one. And minimize that. Come back in here and we can remove this one. So this shows us the designs in the the individual designs that are in our whole composition and I can add by importing, I can duplicate what you've seen and you can remove. So everything is done through these three controls. So let's import that new flower, go up a level, pick it, and there it is and you can see that we have three of them on the screen here and they are bigger. Change that to one and there it is right there in the middle and that looks pretty good. I could save this and you know just a normal save thing. We'll call it asters three. Now what if I wanted something else in the middle here? Maybe I don't want another flower. This would be a great place to put a monogram. So let me get rid of this and I have a monogram that I've already created and we'll use the larger one and I only want one so it's in the center and that looks pretty good. Now granted the colors look pretty icky. <laughs> Let's just be honest. They look icky but I don't really care because what I'm really after is the templates to get the layout. I'm going to pick those colors when I do my project and when I decide on my fabric. So I might want a monochromatic look. I want, might want a very soft look. So I don't have to go by the colors that I see here. Now if you do want a pretty one, like the first one we saw with the butterflies and the flowers, the butterflies and roses, that was pretty. And those designs were colored in another program, in that case in Brilliance. So if you want your designs to look pretty on the screen, color them outside and bring them in as PES and bring them in as the old format PES because the new format the colors get funky. So I just want to say a few words about this monogram. If I zoom in on it you'll see that it looks like it's missing some stitches and that's because 
I enlarged this and these stitches got a little bit longer so the software is thinking it's a, a trim or a jump. I'm not worried about that. What I'm concerned about is making a template. But I want to point out that this is an interlocking monogram. See how this L goes under and then it goes over? And that's because I edited two letters in, in Brilliance Enthusiast. In Brilliance Enthusiast is an editing program, so you can take apart designs and put them back together in interesting sorts of ways. And if you want to see how to do this, I do have a YouTube video just on how to create an interlocking monogram, so you can check that out. I think you can see that Starfish Revolution makes it so easy to create intricate and precise layouts with a minimum of effort on your part. The software is easy, it's the choices that you can make within the software and with your own designs that can overwhelm you. I suggest that instead of playing with that solitaire game, you get creative and play with Starfish Revolution instead. See what you can do with your design stash. You might amaze yourself. So you can download this app from www.starfishrevolution.com.au and start having your own fun.